live show. Oh, yeah, it feels great. Yeah. Kinetic energy is amazing. Live energy, great feeling. Mm. Incredible feeling to do this. Yeah. Here's the good news yeah. is, this is a great feeling to do a live uh -huh. show. It's, it's a ton of fun, it's very exciting, and yeah. we get to do it again tomorrow night. We'll be live after tomorrow night's uh, debate. Our oh, guest yeah. will be uh, Chris Christie. Oh, tomorrow yeah. night, we'll give a Republican yeah. perspective on the Democrats. Yeah. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, my first guest is the 29-year-old superstar representative from the 14th District of New York. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. <laughs> Congresswoman, first of all, <laughs> thanks, thanks so much for being back here. <laughs> we, we, we're you. live. We're happy to do the show. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back. Now, uh, listen, uh, happy debate night, first of all. Happy debate night. Yes. And uh, it, it, what stood out to you tonight? Um, other than there was a fair amount of Spanish being spoken. There was, there now, was. Now, uh, there as was, someone yes. with a Puerto Rican heritage tonight, yeah. what, how, how did that, uh, I did mean, that appeal to you? I, I loved it because it did, I represent the Bronx. There was mm -hmm. a lot of Spanglish in the building. I mean, it was, uh, it, I thought it was humorous sometimes, at times. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 especially because sometimes the content of the question, I thought people were just going to start saying, Hola, estoy postulando por presidente y no te voy a dar una respuesta a su pregunta, which means <laughs> I will not give you an answer to your question. Um, but it was, it was good. I thought it was a, a, a good gesture to the fact that we are a diverse country, so... Well, what were some of the biggest moments to you? What in, 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 in your text chains, uh, what in your group yeah. text chains, what's blowing up? Well, I think uh, sometimes with the debate stage this big, it can kind of seem like a high school classroom. And, uh, and so there are some folks that like, didn't seem like they read the book and then they got called on. <laughs> And then, Anybody in particular? And you, you, wanna... you know, you kind of like, it, it depends on the question. And so, uh, so they'll answer the question or they'll get called on. And I don't think some candidates thought that they were going to get called on a certain question. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, yes, the hero was courageous and the protagonist of the story. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and Moby Dick was the whale. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, people talk about, leading up to this, people have been talking about how there's so many candidates on stage it's like kind of a combination of speed dating and, and a first date. It's the first debate. Who gets, do you think, by the Democratic voters, who gets asked back for a second date here? I think, um, I think Elizabeth Warren gets asked back. I think so, too. I, th I think she knocked it out of the park. I think she knocked it out of the park. I think Julian Castro did a phenomenal job tonight. Uh -huh. And, um... Wow, your, your Spanish accent is really yeah, good in yeah, saying his name. You sound really like good. Beto O'Rourke right yeah. there. It's really <laughs> perfect, um, perfect. I think perfect. both of them were, were great. I think we, there were some surprises, too. What know? about Mayor de Blasio? You know? you know, I think he was good. He was, I think what I have learned, too, going to D.C., is that not everyone is accustomed to being a New Yorker. And I have to work with Iowans and Minnesotans and stuff. And they're like, whoa, hey, relax. Like, take it down a bit. And I'm like, what do you mean? So uh, I think, but, but you know what? The country has worked with New Yorkers. We have, we have to atone, I think, for the one we have in the White House now. So we owe, we owe the country good New Yorkers. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there were, there were underdogs tonight. You were an underdog, yeah. you know. Were any of the underdogs really surprise you tonight? What about uh, Tim Ryan? What about uh, John Delaney? <laughs> and could you pick them out in a lineup if you had um, to? I think that a lot of... 
You know, sometimes you're an underdog until you're not. <laughs> so, okay, so, so they can still break out. They so you know, there's out. there's always a chance, but I'll be but I'll be honest. I I really do think that this was a breakaway night, and yeah. I think that. Um, there was, like, I think Elizabeth Warren really distinguished herself. I think uh, Julian Castro really distinguished herself. I think Cory Booker did a great job at, mm -hmm. uh, in talking about um, criminal justice. And I think that there were communities that got centered tonight. The trans community got centered tonight. The immigrant community got centered tonight. And I think that those, that was an extraordinary moment as well. Do you think the debate wise. moderators uh, brought up the subjects that needed to be brought up? Was there anything that you <laughs> wished they had talked about tonight that didn't get addressed? I don't think that we are discussing climate change the way we need to be discussing climate change. It is such a huge, broad, systemic issue, and you can't just say, is Miami gonna exist in 50 years? We need to say, what are you gonna do about this? And I, I know there's a lot of folks, a lot of young people that have been mobilizing for an en entire climate debate uh, in, in the Democratic caucus. I think it's a good idea um, because when it comes to climate change, um, climate change is an infrastructure issue, it's a jobs issue, it's an energy issue, it's a foreign policy issue, and we can't just talk about the Copacabana. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. Well, the, so this is the first one. This is the first debate. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, we have uh, the, the big Bs. Mm -hmm. You got uh, Biden, uh, you got Buttigieg, uh, you got Bernie. Mm -hmm. And you said, uh, I believe this morning, if I'm not mistaken, you're quoted as implying that Joe Biden <laughs> is not necessarily the safe choice that people think he is. What do you yeah. mean by that? Well, I think... First of all, I think it's dangerous to assume that any candidate is a quote unquote safe choice, that you pick one candidate and that's just gonna deliver an election for you. Um, but with respect to, um, to Vice President Biden and, and to, it's more about an overall electoral strategy, I think. And I think there's this idea that we have to sacrifice everything, that we can't talk about working class issues, that we can't talk about um, criminal justice issues, that we can't talk about immigration because it isolates this very small sliver of Obama to Trump voters. And I think that that's a mistake because if we sacrifice the, the issues of so many communities, um, I think we depress turnout. And what we need is more people to turn out next year than have ever turned out in America. Well, we have to take, we have to take a quick break here. But uh, when we come back, I will ask the Congresswoman about some of the investigations into President Trump that are being taken up by one of the committees that you actually sit on. We'll be right back. Stick around.